Stephen. Uh, two wins from two seasons at the top of the early Pro 12 table. Uh, what's the verdict as far as the coaches are concerned? I'm um, obviously pretty happy in around uh, winning our first two games. It's always great to win games, but ultimately there's still a lot of work for us to be done. Um, it's only two games into a 22 game season in the league, but it's something that we're pretty pleased with, especially a young group going up to the Dragons. It's a difficult place. We're up there many times and not got what we needed up there, but I thought the boys resilient at the end to, to come away with the four points and probably a little bit of disappointment that we did make it so close towards the latter in that stage of the game. But like I say, there's a load of learning experience around it and we worked pretty hard at the start of this week in pre preparation for Edinburgh. We talk a lot internally about character and I think the young group has shown that in the two games. The way they turned around a sticky patch against Treviso and came back at the end and then in Newport the way they held on in a tough last 10 minutes. I think that's probably the most pleasing thing from the two games. Yeah, it is pleasing and like it, you know, do you know what I mean? we're looking at it and like we say, we've got four points from up there but we've still got lots to work on but like you say, there's a lot of character and I thought probably the last sort of minute of the game where you look at, like you've got Duncan, one end of the spectrum, you've got Renier who's now making heavy collisions in round Andy Powell, you've got Biggs and then Bish and you've got people coming off the line making positive tackles towards the end to make sure we see that game out. It's it's a good learning environment. It's always good to learn when you've come off the back of a victory. Do you allow yourself a right smile at the way the first two weeks of the season have, have panned out off the back of what was said pre-season? Or is it something you totally ignore and look, let's just get on with what we're doing? Yeah, don't get me smiles on me anyway. Um, but no, it's something that... It's just two games. We can't get carried away with it. Like we didn't get carried away when we lost a couple of pre-season friendly. We've pitted ourselves against like the best and getting against Saracens going away from home. So we're certainly not getting carried away with it. There's a lot of hard work, and the exciting thing for us is the fact that there's so much ability in the group. But it's still we've got to, it's building blocks, so we've got to keep hitting, and it's never going to be perfect. But because we always want to strive to be better, and I think this young group really want to do that. There are there will be pitfalls along the way, but it's pretty decent that we've had two good wins and going into Sunday I think the boys are in a good place but their feet are on the ground and we know it's going to be a tough test against Edinburgh but ultimately we want to win another game You've touched on players having their feet on the ground as is always the way off the back of a couple of wins players have been now talked up as the best thing since Barry John yeah, um, yeah. Is that a role of the coaching staff to actually make sure that the boys realise that they're not? Yeah, I think it's, it's the role of the coaches, but when you've got senior guys like Alan Wynn and Tips and Duncan, they're pretty quick to put people in their place. And the fact of it was a win, there's nothing else. You ain't won nothing. It's like apart from the game, so it's something that we know we've got to be really focused. Um, Monday and Tuesdays um, have been really hard sessions, been harsh defensively, even though we didn't concede up in the Dragons. I don't think we were where we needed to be for large parts of the game. And we want to be prepared when we go away from home and things. We we are a little bit more ruthless in what we do, and we did create a fair few opportunities up in the Dragons, and probably we could have made that game a little bit easier for ourselves. But it's something like you say, we will definitely keep our feet firmly on the ground as part of being an Osprey. You don't get carried away with ourselves. We just want to get on to the next game and, and improve in our performances. And is it a case of week on week seeing something better than the week before, or? Is it anticipating that there will be peaks and troughs over the season? Yeah, I think there's, uh, there's always going to be peaks and troughs. There'll be certain games where you've done quite hit the straps and there's certain weeks where you may play really well. I think when you go back to Glasgow, play them home last year, where it's probably for 65 minutes, it was one of the best performances around young Sam Davis, played the game. We had a lot of young kids play in. Um, we were leading sort of 16-10 and 16-6 a couple of stages in the game and we, we ended up with nothing. But the pleasing thing for 65 minutes was positive. So it's... You, you can look at it in, in a couple of different ways, but there's, there's huge room for improvement within this group and we, we are striving to be better week in, week out. When we look at Edinburgh on Sunday, what do you expect from a team like them who have strengthened have got a lot of foreign overseas players in the squad and a coach that I know you've spoken to a lot at Pro 12 gatherings, I know mm. that you, you respect, so what do you expect from that team? Yeah, he's a good experienced coach, he's been around the block, um, he's put together a a real sort of um, aggressive team and around how they kick chase. Um, they don't really overplay, like Edinburgh over the years gone by, probably two or three seasons ago, played a hell of a lot of rugby, expansive, they were really dangerous, whereas I'm not saying this Edinburgh team are not dangerous, they're diff dangerous in different ways. I think they'll go for more field position, they'll try and squeeze us, um, and they do fill the field. Um, they will give us some areas to, to attack from, but ultimately they're, they're a good, they get a, a real stronger defensive unit, and. I think it, it is a team he's built. Um, there's no, 
there's no one real standout who will be individual who will do things. But I think he's really putting a real hard nosed team who are really difficult to beat. So you're expecting a tough afternoon to Liberty? Yeah, I think it'll be really tough. I think they're an ugly team and just like at the end of the day, teams don't win in Munster very often and going out there sneaking a victory first game of the season is a real positive for them. I've watched a lot of the footage and you can see they're going to be a tough team. They've got, I think it's 15 overseas within the squad. So we know it's going to be a tough ask, but we've got to concentrate on ourselves and make sure if, I, if our end's right, then hopefully we'll, we'll pick up the spoils. And just looking a little bit further ahead, um, within the next couple of weeks, we expect to see a new second row arriving in the South African steam camp. What can you tell us about him and the reason that we brought him to the region? Yeah, no, I think the cock has um, played a lot of uh, Super 15s. Uh, he's played 49, 50 times for the Stormers. We dug it in around his character. We found out that he is a good man and he's willing to help bring the youngsters through because we have got a hell of a lot of talent coming through it like Adam Beard, Rory Thornton, Rodri Hughes, there's a lot of stocks coming underneath. They're not quite ready to play for us in, in around the Rabo yet but I think um, the cock will help us in that department and then you've got the likes of Alan Wynn will definitely be away autumn Six Nation times and I think if Lloyd Pierce is consistent rugby he could be knocking the door so we need overseas experience to take us away to where we go to Ulster away on a, on a Friday night through the autumn or through the Six Nations we need people to lead through that thing because we make no bones about it we are a young squad and probably we will get a little bit younger throughout those autumn Six Nations periods and we, we will be sort of leaning on people like the Cock and Beerman and Duncan through those times. And there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not he's going to be a Welsh international in three years mm. time your thoughts on that? Um, we're pretty good at blowing things out of proportion I think he said something and it's been taken totally out of sort of context I've spoken to him he's, he's been over we've met him he's, he's a real good man and ultimately he will have ambition to play for Wales in three years but he's got to get his Osprey rugby let the Osprey rugby do his, talk, do his talking and then definitely the last thing we've got a young team we've talked about we've got some tough games coming up we really need supporters to be behind their, their region and the young players to, sh to help them achieve what we believe they can. Yeah, definitely. And I, I can only draw on experience from the Dragons. Being away from home, our travelling support was fantastic. And the more support we get down that Liberty, those young boys really respond to it. And um, hopefully we can uh, follow that up with, with a real positive performance.